Welcome to the Psych Central Show, where each episode presents an in-depth look at issues from the fields of psychology and mental health. With your host, Gabe Howard, and featuring Vincent M. Wales. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Psych Central Show. Vincent M. Wales, who is normally here with us, has decided to go visit the California Redwoods. They are they are gigantic and they are red, so they kind of remind me of me, but Vin said that he needed a break and wanted to take off, so I decided to let him do it. But in order to replace him, I brought along two guests. Normally we give you one, but this time we give you two. We have Gabriel Nathan, the only other Gabe that I have ever met in the real world, and Glenn Holston, both from OC87 Recovery Diaries. And they're going to tell us a little bit about themselves and what they do and who they are, and of course, what the OC87 Recovery Diaries are. So since Gabe is the editor-in-chief and outright us all, I thought I'd let him go first. Gabe, tell me about yourself. Uh, well, first of all, Gabe, thank you very much for having me on the show. And uh, I just want to let our view, uh, your listeners know that you and I have not actually met in person. And when that event does happen, there's going to be a cataclysmic, seismic happening um, when our hands connect for that handshake or hug. It's a possibility. Um, and I am looking forward to that event, just to throw that out there. Um, as you mentioned, I am the editor-in-chief of OC87 Recovery Diaries. Uh, I'm very proud of the work that we do to tell stories of mental health, empowerment, and change. We have stories in a variety of formats, uh, personal essays, films uh, done by my fellow guest here on the program, Glenn Holston, uh, poetry, art, uh, all different kinds of medium to showcase individuals uh, involved in their own journeys of mental health recovery. Excellent. Now, before we get into that, who are you, aside from the editor-in-chief? Wow, so we, we have 23 minutes, huh? <laughs> That's yep. okay. Glenn, Glenn doesn't need to talk. Uh, <laughs> who am I? <clears throat> so I am uh, someone with my own mental health challenges, ideal daily, hourly, with anxiety and depression and obsessive compulsive tendencies, as I like to call them. And I, for five years, I worked uh, on the inpatient unit of a crisis psychiatric hospital called Montgomery County Emergency Service. I worked on the inpatient unit and I also worked in development and fundraising and program development for the hospital. So I have that experience. Uh, I've also been a writer for years and years and an editor, someone who is in love with the English language. And I really do believe that storytelling is the way. And it seems like there may be more to that sentence, but really there's a period there. Storytelling is the way. And to me, that's that's how we become closer to one another. That's how we come closer to understanding one another. And I think that's the ultimate human challenge uh, to understand each other and ourselves. Gabe, I, I am starting to get worried that you and I are the same person. Uh, luckily, I have your picture here. I, I have seen a picture and you are not a tall, giant redhead. So we are, in fact, different people. But I, I completely agree with everything that you just said. And even if I didn't, it's your story. So that's only fair. But thank you. Thank you so much for opening up about that. Let's get over to Glenn. Glenn, exact same question. Introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself. How did you end up here? I'm a filmmaker, and I, uh, I became engaged with the Recovery Diaries website because the website is an outgrowth of a feature film that I made with uh, the founder of OC87 Recovery Diaries, Bud Clayman, and it's a film about his journey of recovery and his dreams of being a film filmmaker himself. So we made this 90-minute film called OC87, and we can explain what OC87 is in a moment. That had a terrific run, and we were in festivals and theaters and conferences, and everywhere we went, people stood up uh, after experiencing this wonderfully cathartic movie and had their own journeys of recovery to share. And we said, God, we have to have some place to capture these stories and tell them, because they can't just like go away into the air after this screening is done. So that was actually the genesis of the website. We wanted to place where all these stories could live. And as the website has sort of found its its footing, it's really grown into what I love so much about it is this sort of very eclectic 
place where people from all stripes tell their stories of recovery, inspiring each other in different ways. So I'm, I'm on sort of the filmmaking, image making side of the thing. Gabe's the wordsmith. <laughs> What I love about both of you is that I asked you both about yourselves and, and, and you told me about the OC87 Recovery Diaries, which is, that, that's how I came to know both of you. Uh, I'm going to have something published on there. Uh, you both spoke very highly of it and it, it made me very, very happy to hear. But I, I'm, I'm still going to throw it back just like I did with Gabe. Who's Glenn? Aside uh, from, ju- you're, you're not just a filmmaker. I'm, I mean, you're, you, you helped edit my work, for example. Who are you? Well, I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a cousin, I'm, I'm a person in the world who's finding his own footing with every every adventure. I learn a little bit more about myself, and I have to say that the work that I do is, is always a search about who I am. So um, that was revealed to me many, many moons ago, but um, with each video I make, each film, each piece of copy I edit, I'm always looking for strength and I'm looking for encouragement. I guess that's who I am, a seeker, I guess. That, that is, sounds very deep. <laughs> that is very cool. Um, so the the question that was on my mind, and I decided to wait until until this forum to ask, OC87 Recovery Diaries. It, it, it's not exactly a name that lends itself, you know, it, it's not obvious. I mean, Psych Central, obvious. You can see where we got the name. doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. OC87 Recovery Diaries is, is OC Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no. OC, OC stands for obsessive compulsive. And really, it, the name of the site has an interesting story. In fact, uh, I'm working right now editing a 1000 word essay by OC87 Recovery Diaries founder and publisher Bud Clayman, which talks about what is OC87? What does that mean? Because viewers to the site need to know that. And it's it's very important to his journey of mental health recovery. And I think it speaks to really kind of a universal theme in humanity in general. So the OC stands for obsessive compulsive, as I said, and 87 refers to the year 1987, which is the year that as Buddy describes it, it was the year that I tried to control everything. And things kind of really went south for him at that point in his, in his personal life and in his recovery journey. Control is, is an issue that I struggle with a lot. Hard to imagine an editor-in-chief having control <laughs> issues. It's crazy, right? But I do. And I think that's a very universal thing. I think we as human beings, not to overgeneralize too much, but we want to control things. And we like things that we can control. And when we are in situations where we feel out of control, that can lead you to feeling anxiety and helplessness and fear and uncertainty. We want to know what's around the corner when we walk into a room or into a conversation or a social situation. Not having that control, I think, is a very real struggle for a lot of people, uh, whether they're diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder or not. Very true. It's in mental health advocacy, as as we all know, it, I really think that a, a large part of the stigma and discrimination surrounding it is that fear. It's the fear of the unknown. Mental illness has a lot of stereotypes attached to it. The most common one, of course, is violence. And since people don't know whether or not somebody diagnosed with a mental illness is going to be violent, they just assume that you're going to be because they're afraid that it might happen. So you're right. As, as Gabe said, Telling these stories lets people know that somebody diagnosed with a mental illness is more than just the stereotype or the the, the pop culture fiction that you know drives uh, midnight movies along, and uh, that that's why it's really powerful. So I have a question for Glenn. One of the things that Glenn said was that this whole thing kicked off because you made a movie uh, with the founder of the site. I believe his name is Buddy. Mm-hmm. Yep. So how did that happen? How did you and Buddy meet, get the idea for this? Let's take us all the way to the beginning. Before OC87 existed, before the movie existed, there were there were a couple of guys sitting in a room. Go. <laughs> it wasn't quite that. <laughs> um, so Buddy and I are the same age, and Buddy went to film school when I was going to college. And it's just one of the, the poetry of life that he, right at the age of college, is when he sort of became really incapacitated and that, oh, 1987 was the year what he he had sort of his struggles were really revealed to him but that's the starting point for a film where he sort of climbs from that place of darkness and and ventures into the light and so that's the journey that our film tells but buddy had the idea and he was working with a man named scott 
who was in the mental health field who helped him develop this idea to a certain level, uh, a film idea. They got it to a certain place. And then I think they decided that they wanted somebody who had actually made a film to join them on the team to help them through that part of the journey. So they sort of courted me and um, I bit because Buddy was very interested in using film to explore sort of his lived state, um, what it was like for him to be in places where life was challenging, on a bus, in a restaurant, walking down the street, where his internal journey, internal monologue was very challenging. And that was appealing to me as a filmmaker to sort of have um, somebody who was willing to go to that interesting film place, but I'm sure scary um, mental place. So Buddy and Scott Johnson and I actually directed the film together. It was a trio, and it was a pretty successful adventure because we had somebody who had lived the journey, someone who knew how to tell the story, and someone who knew how to sort of... Uh, Scott was the mental health professional who sort of knew how to um, help us both as we worked on it. So that's that's what happened. We spent, God, I think three years making the movie, and then many more years sharing it. It's available in, you know, it's out there on Hulu and all kinds of uh, places if you just... Um, would Google OC87, you'll find it. And it's a really inspiring film. Buddy is a hero who puts his life out there as a place where we can all see a bits of ourselves, but he's also a strong individual. Just real quick, if you go to OC87recoverydiaries.com, can you get the film there? <laughs> that's a great question. Okay? <laughs> and if you go to OC87.com, that's the link to the film's website. Very cool, very cool. OC87movie.com oc87movie.com will get you i'm sure it has the links to like hulu and amazon and all of that yeah. stuff and we'll yeah. we'll figure that out before the end of the show i promise all right we we paused the show for a moment so that we could go ahead and google and what did we find out glenn our website is oc87.com it's, that's the website for the film that's the website for the film and then oc87recoverydiaries.com is the website that grew out of the film correct it's the um the cousin the cousin OC eighty seven recovery diaries is is relatively new. I mean, five years old is not is not that old. Gabe, can can you speak to? So first, you had the the. We know where Glenn came in. We know how this. When did OC eighty seven recovery diaries dot com start? <clears throat> OC eighty seven recovery diaries is approximately four years old. I believe Glenn is that correct? I, I, yeah, I'm hoping so. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's all been very exciting, but kind of a blur. <laughs> and as Glenn mentioned, it was really an outgrowth of the film and people's desire to tell their own stories. And I came into the mix about two years ago as an editor. I met Buddy and, and you know we realized quickly that we wanted to work together. So I started getting assigned stories and authors to work with. And the site has really grown. Initially, there were uh, a few videos on the site and a couple essays, and there were also some reviews. And it's just steadily grown. And now we have content every single week. There's a regular feature with an essayist, Mike Hedrick, who writes about schizophrenia issues twice a month. There is an original film done by Glenn once a month, the second Thursday of the month, and a feature on social media, which is the last Monday of the month. That is incredible. It's an awful lot of content. Now, are you the only editor-in-chief that, that OC Recovery Diaries has ever had? Well, Bud was actually the editor-in-chief from the inception of the site up until around late November. Buddy contacted me, and he said that he was interested in stepping down from the position. He wanted to pursue some other endeavors. Uh, so he is on the site as publisher, and I assumed those duties in late November. So so you're, you're relatively new. I am indeed. I All am. right. You know, I, I, the more I talk to you, the, the more I'm worried that I'm going to lose my originality status. It's like, oh, I'm quirky and fun and I have a mental illness and I'm the only one. And yeah, yeah, I might, I might have to send my lawyers after you. I'll tone it down. Sorry. <laughs> That's quite all right. Okay, so there, there's a joke that I often make. And I say that when you're diagnosed with a mental illness, you're, you're prescribed a blog. There are lots and lots and lots of people writing about their experiences with mental illness. And, and I make that joke not in any way to say that people should stop doing it. It's just it's it's obvious that this is a great outlet for people uh, that have experienced trauma in their lives, which which mental illness is. So the question that I always pose to people that are, that are starting websites, et cetera, is in, in this, you know, again, Google any mental illness and, and you're going to get 1.8 billion results. 
So, and, and four years ago, there were less, but there were still lots. What made you decide that, hey, we're going to be different? Because OC87 Recovery Diaries, you you got through. You got through the the noise and established yourselves as a great place to go. But again, it, it I, I'm trying to avoid saying it wasn't an original idea to publish writing, poetry, and, and art by people with mental illness. Because, well, let, let's be honest, it wasn't. But you still rose to the top. Can you talk about that process? Sure. I think in any nonprofit or any organization or any business, you have to answer the question, what makes you unique? You know, why you uh, amid the the noise and the plethora of, of options and opportunities available? And I think something that Buddy talks about when he talks about his film really resonates with me and I think helps to answer this question. Filmmaking is not a solitary endeavor. First of all, there were th- three directors in the film, Scott Johnson, Glenn, and Buddy. And then there are the myriad folks involved in production and post-production and sound engineering and, and editing and all of that. So you are constantly working with other people. I think what makes OC87 Recovery Diaries different from a blog is that a blog is an individual writing in a solitary way, and they're expressing themselves, and that's wonderful. But with OC87 Recovery Diaries, you have individuals telling their story, and then they're assigned an editor. And then there's a bond and a relationship established there. There is a connection. There is a human communication. And then there's the graphic designer. And Leah is our graphic designer, and she incorporates her skill and talent um, and her extreme visual strength in the mix. And then you throw the, the readers into the mix and the viewers of the films, and they're expressing themselves with their content. And so it's this really beautiful synergy working. We're not solitary beings. We weren't meant to live that way. So I think having this opportunity to share the work in a collaborative space and then send it out via our social media channels and have the response and the support, it really makes it into something a little bit different. Very cool. Glenn, do you want to add to that? Well, the only thing that I have is the sense of history. And, and, you know, when we started, it was a bit organic. You know, we were not really surveying the internet landscape about what else was there. We were, we were really going from a sort of a place that started with the emergency that we felt in the, at the Q and A's from the film. So we were just coming off of that very exciting journey of sharing a story and seeing it really connect with people. And I think that was the energy that was motivating the beginning of the website. So I have to feign sort of ignorance to what else was out in the world at the time. We were just taking baby steps together, but they were exciting. And because there was, um, Buddy's energy behind it. Um, we, I mean, I think we started once a month with some content, and then I was doing video projects, and uh, so I think that's actually a, a strength. It it didn't have a master plan or an ulterior motive, but you know, a five year plan. I, right now, you know, through Gabe's strength of organizing it, it's got a lot more sort of professional patina, which is nice. But at the beginning, it was a bit of let's put on a show kind of attitude. The question that I'm sure people listening are going to wonder is what kind of stories make the cut? How do they, how do they get their essay published on your site? What's, what's the process? The best way to go about submitting to us is go to our website and there's a a thing that says submissions. And so we have our submission guidelines there and we talk about what we're looking for. And we really do look for stories in any kind of format. We look for video, we look for art, we look for music. Our core really is the personal essay. And so for personal essay submissions, we do have a word limit of approximately 2,000. I mean, we give or take a little bit, you know, 200 words in either direction or so, or several thousand in your case. (laughs) We work with that. But I think the, the question of what makes a good submission really, it's again, it's kind of a universal question of what makes a good film what makes a good conversation what makes a good interview this by the way for your listeners is a good interview in case they (laughs) but vulnerability truth a little bit of humor putting yourself out there having some integrity in the story that you're telling allowing for the potential to be hurt i think that these are all things that make a good story keeping in mind your story arc where is your story going having a bit of focus and care around the mechanics of writing that's really going to communicate to me who's going to be review who reviews all the submissions 
this is somebody who has something to say. They're saying it in a unique way. They care about the story that they're presenting. And this is going to be relevant and impactful to other people. I mean, that's really what I'm looking for when I'm reading submissions. Glenn, as the as the person who who you know you're you're an editor, you work with the writers. What are you looking for to take what is submitted that 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 Gabe liked to what is actually published? Because I'm, you know, there's they don't look the same. Well, I loved Gabe's words there about vulnerability. I, I like that when people feel when you feel like you're, you're experiencing something that you haven't lived before, or or you're connecting with it, but it's somebody's unique experience. I guess our relationship is a good example. You know, the things that were strong, I sort of revealed to you and sort of asked you to stay with those. And the things that weren't as strong to me just were kind of things that we paired off. Um, but I also want to stay true to your experience. And I, I, you never want anyone to feel like someone's stomping over their life story. My God, you know, you just want to make sure that you feel like someone's holding it. You know, you said holding hands. That's a good that's a good way to say it. You know, it's just sort of taking you through the process and making it sort of match our goals in a way that sort of shines it and, and honors it as best possible. Thank you both so much for being on here. Uh, OC87recoverydiaries.com is where you can check out the website just in case we didn't mention it enough during the podcast. If you are an iTunes listener, please subscribe, give us a rating, say good things, tell a friend, help us take over the world. Uh, again, thank you both and we will see you next week. PsychCentral.com is the internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website. Psych Central is overseen by Dr. John Grohall, a mental health expert and one of the pioneering leaders in online mental health. Our host, Gabe Howard, is a professional speaker, award-winning writer, and mental health advocate. You can find more information on Gabe and his work at GabeHoward.com. Vincent M. Wales is an award-winning speculative fiction novelist and Suicide Prevention Crisis Counselor. You can find more information on Vincent at vincentmwales.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email talkback at psychcentral.com.